There are many reasons why industry giants like Amazon choose to settle and grow in Canada. Our workforce is highly educated, skilled, and diverse. Folks across the country are ready to take on the jobs of tomorrow and help companies like yours shape the future. That was Prime Minister Justin Trudeau at an announcement earlier today that online retailer Amazon will expand its presence in the city of Vancouver. It'll be taking over space at the former Canada Post building right in the downtown core. It's expected to add more than 3,000 jobs. To look at what an expanded Amazon presence in Vancouver really means, I'm joined by Jill Tipping. She's president and CEO of the BC Tech Association. Jill, what does this mean for Vancouver's tech scene? This is a fantastic shot in the arm for Vancouver and for British Columbia and for our thriving tech ecosystem. We're really excited. In, in what way? Because I'll be honest, the people I'm speaking with are telling me, man, this is one more giant American company that's going to come in and now I have to compete with them for talent. Well, I got to tell you, I'm pro-growth. So every time I see another tech job coming to BC, I'm excited. And what we need is a thriving tech economy. And, and there's room in that ecosystem for startups, for growing companies, and, and for larger companies too. What, what do you make, though, of that, that concern that, that tech companies in BC, and I'm hearing it from Toronto and Montreal as well, that when those big guys come in, I, I, I talked to a guy last night who was saying he lost three hires last week to Microsoft, and now he's going to have to compete with Amazon as well, and they're getting all kinds of government initiatives to come here, and, and he, he's concerned what it means for his business. What do you say to that? I have to say that I, I share some of that concern. What I want to see is to make sure that in the face of this fantastic demand, and, and there's, there's homegrown demand too. I mean, just last week, Stem Cell Technologies was announcing a huge manufacturing plant increase. Fortinet's a homegrown success story that's looking to double the size of their workforce. We're all looking to grow and grow fast. And what we really need to answer that incredible demand is an increased supply of workers. So, so what we're calling upon uh, governments at all levels to do is to fund the knowledge workers of the future by investing in more education places because that's really what will give us a thriving successful economy. You said off the top that, that the, the, this announcement in itself is, is good for the industry at large uh, and, and you know we spoke offline a little bit about what this means for homegrown tech companies. Does the arrival of a giant like that, we've heard the concerns, is there a link that you can draw between the arrival of a giant like Amazon and the fostering of some of that homegrown talent? What is that? Link? Yeah, it's, it's interesting. It can have a positive impact just from the beginning because generally when larger companies come to town like Amazon or growing a size that they're growing, um, they do tend to partner with the smaller and the medium-sized companies in town and create more customers for those smaller companies. So there's that immediate benefit. But the bigger benefit is the long-term play. So uh, people will, will uh, come and join a large company and, and grow it and bring those global experiences and those deep competencies. And one day, perhaps, they'll decide they're ready for something smaller. So the, the spin-off effects that come from executives from major companies, homegrown or, or from elsewhere, starting spin-offs, that is the story of every successful tech ecosystem in the world, and it's what we see here, too. And have you already seen that? I, I mean, I, I talk about, you know, guys competing with Microsoft. I know also people that have left Microsoft to go start their own companies. Exactly. I know people that have done that from IBM. Has that model existed, and, and does it still prosper in, in Vancouver now? absolutely does it's it's one of the most exciting things is that is that people enjoy and get the taste of growth and and global competitiveness and then they want to bring it to a new problem they want to bring the ingenuity and the skills that they've learned at some of the biggest companies in the world and they want to start something of their own and really build something uh, that's that's a really strong tradition here in BC. We've seen it for the last 25 years. We're seeing it increasing in the last few years, and, and I think moves like this will just set us up better for the future. Do you think this sets up Canada and potentially Toronto for having a, a better relationship with Amazon for HQ2, for the, the large second headquarters Amazon's building? Oh, I've got my fingers crossed for Toronto. I, I, I think that could be a fantastic win. But what it also reminds us of is there's lots of growth possibilities for those of us who are HQ1 adjacent. Um, and personally, I'm, I'm pretty excited about the idea that we might be a, a large site regardless of HQ2 decisions. All right, Jill, that's all the time we have for today. Thanks for doing this, Bill. Thanks so much. Jill Tibbing, President and CEO of the BC Tech Association.